MLB jerseys used to look like this. They were supposed to look like this, but now they look like this. But these Nike jerseys worn in every single MLB game aren't even made by Nike. That is done by a completely different company. Traditionally, if you wanted uniforms for your team, you would need to find a company that makes uniforms. Pay that company, and in exchange, they will give you uniforms. Not in this case. Nike is in charge of providing MLB uniforms, but MLB pays them nothing and actually makes Nike pay them $1 billion. And somehow this exchange still ends up making Nike millions. They paid another billion to make every single NFL jersey. Players immediately complained they didn't fit and made them look fat. They paid another billion to make every single NBA jersey, and immediately they started ripping and falling apart on the court. And now MLB is having similar issues. This spring, Nike just made league-wide changes and introduced new uniforms that many fans, media members, and players are calling the worst uniforms of all time. Everyone seems to want to blame Nike and Fanatics for making these terrible uniforms, but in reality, it's actually Jeremy Lin's fault. Yes, because 12 years ago, Lin Sanity created a chain reaction, and because of it, this spring, Nike moved the MLB logo lower, changed the base color from white to off-white, made the letters of players' names noticeably smaller, and even some jerseys seem to have switched from stitched logos to ironed-on logos. When they introduced these jerseys, one player immediately said they felt like they were from TJ Maxx. Another player called them papery. The biggest complaint about them were the pants because they can no longer be tailored. Many players hated the fit and entire teams just started wearing their pants from previous seasons during games. More issues arose on picture day when images of players wearing these pants showed that the pants were see-through and multiple awkward pictures of players junk were being shown and spread online adding more fuel to the fire. As people online joked about MLB games having to be broadcasted like this because the pants were see-through, Fanatics, the company that manufactures the jerseys, downplayed the changes, saying the pants material hadn't changed and the see-through effect is something that always happens on picture day. However, when one fan tagged Fanatics in a picture of a jersey, they responded by saying, quote, looks like we dropped the ball on this one. Send me a DM so I can learn more about it. Turns out, this jersey that Fanatics Twitter acknowledged was a mistake was an actual game-issued uniform given to Michael Chavez to wear in a game. Shortly after, Fanatics deleted the tweet. Fanatics is the company who manufactures the Nike jerseys worn in every MLB game. Nike designs the jerseys, tells them what to make, what materials to use, and Fanatics uses their factories to produce them and send them to teams. They have exclusive deals to distribute jerseys for almost every major sports league in the world. They are a $31 billion company, are praised in the business world for changing the sports merchandise game, and their CEO recently won the Athletics Sports Person of the Year award. But many consumers hate them. They are constantly being blamed for making replica jerseys worse and worse. There are entire social media accounts calling them out for their poor jerseys. When news broke they would be making the new NHL uniforms, hockey fans revolted, leading to backlash everywhere. And now they're being blamed for making MLB uniforms look like they're from TJ Maxx. But the reason Fanatics is in this position may come down to one moment in February 2012. Jeremy Lin had already been cut by two two teams in this season alone. His current team was considering cutting him before they randomly put him into a game and he scored 25 points, had five rebounds and seven assists in only 36 minutes. At the time, Adidas made NBA uniforms, Reebok made NFL uniforms, and Majestic made MLB jerseys. Each company had exclusive deals with each league. Back then, these companies like Adidas would pay to manufacture jerseys for the league because it also gave them the right to make replica jerseys. So every time a fan bought a jersey, Adidas would get a cut. These three companies were spending a fortune for the rights to manufacture these uniforms until something changed in 2012. Nike entered the market paying $1.1 billion for the rights to make NFL jerseys for five seasons. That is $220 million a year, nearly 10 times more than Reebok had paid for the same rights 
just a year earlier. Even when accounting for inflation, Nike outbid Reebok by over $250 million. But they didn't want to stop at football. They wanted baseball and basketball too. So for a company like Adidas to compete with this insane amount of money Nike was willing to spend, they needed to sell a lot more jerseys. That year, Jeremy Lin gave them that opportunity. He followed his first game with another 28 points against the Jazz. A few days later, he lined up against John Wall and dominated, putting up another 23 points. The entire world all of a sudden knew and was heavily invested in Jeremy Lin. And with his next game against Kobe Bryant and the Lakers at Madison Square Garden, it was a perfect storm. He was the biggest name in American sports and people across the world rushed to get his jersey. Unfortunately for them, there were none. Just a week before, Lin was a nobody, so Adidas had no reason to make a Jeremy Lin jersey. Lin torched Kobe Bryant, putting up 38 points as the entire MSG crowd cheered him on like he was their savior. This was the height of Lin sanity, yet Jeremy Lin jerseys didn't even exist yet. The Knicks quickly put t-shirts on their website, but warned consumers they wouldn't be delivered for weeks. Desperate to take advantage of the demand, Models pulled Jeremy Lin jerseys off the assembly line early, but were only available in two of the 150 locations. The Knicks themselves couldn't even get Jeremy Lin jerseys, finally making an announcement that they'd be available at the team store, but admitting they only had 200 of them available. Adidas scrambled to make as much Jeremy Lin merch as possible and made a ton of it. However, Lin's sanity ended almost as quickly as it started. He finished the season injured, and that offseason, the Knicks decided to let Lin leave in free agency. And now, the insane amount of Jeremy Lin Knicks merch Adidas rushed to make was worthless. According to Models, following his departure, they sold about 40,000 Jeremy Lin jerseys and t-shirts for as low as $1 each, resulting in a massive loss in profit. This likely cost the NBA millions of dollars. The deal with NBA itself may have cost Adidas millions of dollars. By the end of the contract, their share of basketball footwear in America was only 3%. Thinking the agreement wasn't worth it, Adidas didn't even make an offer once the contract was up. Yet, for some reason, Nike agreed to essentially the exact same agreement for one billion dollars, paying $125 million a year, which was nearly three times more money than Adidas paid for the exact same deal. And to justify this, they had to sell a lot more jerseys. And to do this, they started making a sh ton of new jerseys. In seven seasons with the NBA, Nike has made 438 different jerseys. That is over 150 more jerseys than Adidas made in the previous seven seasons before Nike took over. By pumping out new jersey after new jersey, Nike has helped NBA increase their jersey sales by double digit percentage points in five of their first six seasons. Nike did the same thing with NFL. In the nine years prior to the Nike deal, there were 126 NFL jerseys. In the nine years since, there's been 180. Within a few years, Nike was selling up to four times as many jerseys as Reebok was a decade before. Nike bragged about building a supply chain that could create a new jersey and have it ready for consumers in weeks. But as we saw with Lansanity, even this is too slow. And that's where Fanatics comes in. Originally an e-commerce business, Fanatics sold sports merchandise online. They were so good at this when MLB signed an exclusive deal to sell all online MLB apparel through Fanatics, their sales went up 67% in one year. Soon Fanatics had deals with NBA, NFL, MLS, Formula One, NASCAR, and pretty much everyone. The Fanatics production line has become so fast and efficient, if a player gets traded tomorrow, Fanatics can make their jersey on their new team team and have it delivered to you in only three business days. Jersey makers used to only offer jerseys of the team's best players because the cost of making them only justified selling the best sellers. Now Fanatics can make a jersey for anyone, whether they're on the team or not, and get it to you in three days. And this has exploded jersey sales. 
Fanatics has been such an asset for major sports leagues, MLB even went as far as to allow them to make their game-worn uniforms. Nike designs the jerseys, gives instructions on how to make them, sends them the materials, and Fanatics does the rest. And Nike still gets their patented swoosh on every single jersey, which in reality may be the only thing they care about. Nike outbid every other company by hundreds of millions of dollars just to force leagues to put this logo on each and every jersey. The NBA refused to put the Adidas logo on game-worn jerseys, but couldn't deny Nike because they paid them three times more. MLB hid the Majestic logo on the sleeve, and teams like the Yankees were exempt from putting them on the jerseys at all to protect the purity of the brand. But when Nike offered the league twice as much money as Majestic paid, they had no choice but to slap a Nike logo right on the front. These jerseys are essentially advertisements which earn Nike billions of dollars in exposure. Last year's Super Bowl generated $285 million worth of exposure for brands. Nike alone accounted for 60 percent of this. During a typical NFL game, the Nike logo is visible on screen for around half the game. That is over 4,000 seconds. That same game, companies paid $7 million for a 30 second ad. That is around $233,000 per second, meaning if they wanted as much airtime as Nike got, they would have to pay $964 million. For their jersey deal, Nike only has to pay $300 million dollars a year and not only gets that much airtime during the Super Bowl they get that much airtime during all 272 NFL games a year. They also have this deal in the NBA where a Nike logo is visible for around 24 minutes every single game. When you watch an MLB game, Nike logos are strategically placed on the chest, so every time the camera zooms in on a player's face, the Nike logo is in the shot. If a player turns around, another logo is strategically placed on their pants to maximize exposure. All the team gear is also made by Nike, so when they cut to a coach or the dugout, there's a Nike logo. And all the replica jerseys are also made by Nike, so if there's a fan shot, the Nike logo is still there. The logo dominates the game. In a full-length playoff broadcast, the Nike logo was visible 66 percent of the time. That is an hour and 40 minutes of exposure. Extrapolate this over an entire MLB season and Nike gets 14.5 million seconds of airtime. 243,000 hours of airtime, which essentially is the equivalent to paying for 486,000 30-second commercials. And that is why Nike spent $1 billion for this.